the most chaotic places on Earth. Over 20 million people are crammed into this sprawling, smog-choked metropolis. TV newsman Eduardo Salazar and his cameraman Jorge Pliego report on the city's traffic gridlock every day. I am in the helicopter in warm mornings. Uh, we do uh, news traffic, and if there is an accident or something like that, we'll, we'll report it. This morning, Pliego spots a fire on the railroad tracks below. We saw a huge uh, column of smoke, and they told us that it was a crash, a big crash. A uh, fuel tank crashed against the train. The fire was uh, all around the train and all around the vehicle. You get excited and your adrenaline starts pumping. The news chopper moves in for a closer look. A tanker truck loaded with 3,000 gallons of gasoline has been hit by a train carrying 30 passengers and is burning. Yet traffic continues to pass by as if nothing has happened. No one seems to realize how dangerous the situation could become. The crash starts a fire that is rapidly heating up the gasoline still sealed in one of the tanker compartments. It is a potentially explosive situation, yet there's no sign of firefighters who are delayed by traffic. Police, led by Miguel Cardenas Enriquez, risk their lives to evacuate the train passengers. We had to take care of the people in danger. I mean, we as policemen cannot think about what can happen to us. Because of the heat, pressure inside the tanker builds dangerously. The train's passengers are now safely removed, but Enriquez sees a young child wandering in the street near the fire. I made signs for him to leave, but he didn't do it. So I ran to him to pull him away, but in that very moment, the explosion occurred. 500 feet above the accident, Salazar and Pliego feel the heat of the blast. And suddenly, a huge explosion came all over the place. The big ball of fire was uh, getting closer to the helicopter, so it was very scary for us. But you keep on recording. If the helicopter were closer, the fragments of the truck would have hit the helicopter. Down on the street, Enriquez shields the young boy from the blast with his body. The explosion wave threw me way to the other side of the street. I felt something burning me when I fell down. The boy is unharmed, but Enriquez and the other officers are seriously burned. But thanks to their efforts, there are no deaths. Firefighters arrive and attack the blaze with special foam. The fire is quickly extinguished. Four weeks later, Enriquez and his men are back on the job, but still nursing their second and third degree burns. The accident happened at this busy rail crossing in the poor working class area of Campestro Guadalupana. On the morning of the crash, the neighborhood was busy as always, and traffic across the tracks was steady. Unfortunately, in a scene played out at rail crossings all over Mexico City, cars and trucks race to beat the trains. The problem was the truck driver. He tried to beat the train, but it is impossible. It was careless of the driver. The decrepit state of Mexico's rail system is also to blame, says journalist Victor Staffron. The railroad has always been very, very old. There are trains from the 1920s, and that is why the signals have not been updated. And because of not updating them, there is a greater risk of accidents. People now feel unsafe traveling by train. The accident site has no barriers or flashing lights to warn of trains. In Mexico, there's many cross trains that don't have the signs, the correct signs, to alert the people, the drivers, that the train is going to pass. 
After the accident, the driver of the truck went into hiding to evade criminal charges. The number of trains using the crossing was cut back after the explosion, but thousands of badly marked crossings remain all across Mexico City. Until the railroad crossings are upgraded, many people in this crowded capital worry that it's only a matter of time before a similar incendiary incident happens again.